Hey folks, Dave here, back in Fallout 4 for a little bit of settlement building and a little bit of a roundtable with you guys about upcoming settlement plans and current settlement and Fallout projects as we're looking at the summer kind of heading towards the end here and Fallout 76 on the horizon. Yeah. I'm actually not at the quarry or Joel's bathhouse of sin, two of the builds that I'm currently working on. Yes. I'm down here in Warwick Homestead, a place where I actually haven't done any official building at all yet. I'm looking to do something a little bit different this week because I think I'm just about out of Let's Build episodes over at the prison at the quarry. I want to do the rest of that building on my own as I lead up to the final tour. Here at Warwick Homestead, this is where I've actually spawned quite a few of my settlers for other settlements. That's why it's just a complete jumbled mess here. My goal was to get lots of beds and as high of a happiness as possible just to get settlers to show up following the beacon. So I've got a bunch of these incorrectly rigged toilets in the garden that's just so that it gets the happiness up. And then the inside of the quote unquote homestead here looks like a bad orphanage tons of beds under the rooftop here just to get people to spawn in I think the people that have spawned here have probably populated three or four other settlement builds I'll just show up here see who's arrived and send them off to their destination but today thinking back to some of my favorite builds from last year I've got this beached tugboat that I've placed. I've got a mod that lets me place the shell of it here. And I'm going to do a bit of building on that today while I talk over some plans with you guys. I loved working on my naval ships in my Kingsport Lighthouse build yeah. last summer. But those ships were my battleship, which was mostly armored up and weaponized, and then a small transport ship, almost airliner style. Here for this beached tugboat, I want to make it a homestead out here on the water. But what's cool about this is it's a complete model of the tugboat, but just a shell. There's going to be lots of room to build, and I want to get creative and do another more concise build. Nothing quite as grand in scale as, say, the prison. I was looking over my settlement locations, having, again, just about run out of things that I can build with you guys at Thicket Excavations, and in the last two and a half years, I've built a lot of settlements, and most of them have been pretty massive. Sometimes they've been entire cities that fit into my own personal General Dave lore, and I'm getting close to the bottom of that list of ideas finally. I've got about five or six solid ideas of varying complexity that I still want to keep working on, but that leaves a handful of settlements that I do not have set ideas for and that might get skipped over. So in this video, I want to give you guys a chance to look at those settlements that I don't have ideas for, and this is your chance to throw some ideas at the dartboard, if you will. I'm going to list those settlements in the description. It includes ones like Jamaica Plains and Finch Farm, for example. And if you have ideas that you'd like to see for those settlements, let me know. Again, no guarantees because I do have set ideas that I am planning on working on, but with Fallout 76 on the horizon, and I am planning on playing that for sure, and hopefully doing a bit of settlement building there as well, I want to kind of laser focus the settlements that I have left. So again, take a look at the description for a list of the settlements that I don't have ideas for just yet, as I'm working on getting things a bit more concise. Uh, here at Warwick, besides this beach tugboat that I want to build on today, I'm thinking that this build will not try to wall in the entire complex as I tend to do. It's just so huge here, so much waterfront area that I think I'm going to build up the tugboat and then the inside of the water plant itself and then uh, that area right there, uh, that raised uh, area of the water tanks. Those will kind of be the three living areas at this settlement. And I'm thinking about creating this like gangway platform system to go from one to the other because I imagine that there's all kinds of nastiness out here in the harbor and possibly uh, raider attacks and whatnot that it's just too much uh, shorefront to cover with a wall system. So I think it would be cool to have 
kind of like three little islands of settlement building inside of our build area here. Uh, beyond that, I don't have a solid plan for Warwick, possibly uh, a bit of a, a trading port, maybe for rafts and stuff coming in and out of the harbor. Maybe a uh, lighthouse of some kind on the roof. Definitely, as you guys can see up front, an artillery piece mounted to the front of this beach tugboat aimed at the raiders camp. Uh, what is that called over there? The Northern Star, that's right. So in case that the raiders try to repopulate that, they get some very quick artillery. Let me go ahead and hop into build mode and we'll get started. While I keep going over some of the possible plans here, I'll show you guys what's going on with the tugboat. One thing that I want to add to the back here, uh, there are some of the tugboats that I can build, as you guys can see. Cost me a pretty penny in steel and rubber, but I want to add a custom-built cabin section to the back here. Kind of a scrappy shack tower. I think I'm going to build it out of uh, just the scrappy metal wall bits because I think yeah I think that uh, this area here with the railings I think there's a crane that might have gone here but we're gonna make it so that it's where people have added onto the tugboat with some living quarters here in the back Just thinking back to uh, last year with that Minutemen battle boat, how much fun that was to build on. I definitely want to do more of that here. This one's going to be uh, non-operational, I think, lore-wise. The shallows here are, well, very shallow, so this thing is definitely beached. I'm trying to think about how much I want to talk with you guys about uh, the plans that I do have for those I think it was again five settlements that I have uh, some notes for whoop grab the tugboat by accident there let me out yeah I don't want to give away the exact ideas of what I'm going to be building at those locations but I will say that I'm looking to fill the last few gaps in my lore. So if you guys have been asking, you know, where does the majority of the Minutemen's food come from and stuff like that, uh, those are some of the questions that I want to answer with these last few builds. I also want to have some more residential areas as well. We've seen so many of the Minutemen military settlements and, you know, the gigantic prison at the quarry. I want to show, outside of just what's at Sanctuary, how the Minutemen are justifying all of this uh, quote-unquote order and safety. People that are actually wanting to live in these General Dave Minutemen settlements, what are they getting in return for following all these rules? So I want to have a farming settlement, I want to have a primarily residential settlement outside of Sanctuary, again. And then a couple others that I really, yeah, I guess I can't say much about them at all because I don't want to spoil uh, their themes. But if you guys had more ideas for those other settlements that you want me to take a look at, now is your time to get those in. I mentioned Fallout 76. I haven't done a video on that yet outside of the announcement uh, because it was announced as I was in the middle of my travels to EA Play and then right to vacation immediately after that and I haven't had a whole lot to add to the discussion that's already out there. There's still a lot we don't know about Fallout 76. Bethesda's press conference was pretty thorough but the more questions that were answered the more that we had I feel like. I'm trying to add some additional deck work here for a second story. There we go. That's more like it. So yeah, I think perhaps once we get some uh, additional gameplay coming out here, hopefully before, not before too long, I'll finally put up some videos discussing my thoughts on Fallout 76, but if you guys want a preview, um, yeah, I'm excited. I am very okay with Bethesda 
trying something different. We've gotten Fallout 4. They've said that single player games remain their primary focus and yeah, I'm okay with them trying something different. And a multiplayer Fallout is a concept that I've talked about with Joel and the casual shenanigans gang for a long time. We've always wanted to be able to co-op Fallout together. And this is a, you know, multiplayer Fallout. But concept still remains. It's the ability to play Fallout with your friends. And that has some exciting possibilities. Are there a lot of things that could go wrong? <laughs> Definitely. But I'm more than willing to give Bethesda a chance and see what they're cooking up. Although it seems like a lot of this work around Fallout 76 is still uh, in the conceptual stages as far as final uh, gameplay decisions go. Because they're still talking about uh, possibly making death uh, less harsh. Trying to figure out how to balance things between the PvP and, you know, if... <laughs> General Dave decides to make a gigantic settlement. You don't have someone that just rolls in immediately and nukes it with no consequences and all that time and work is wasted. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they're coming up with, whatever the final results may be. And once we know more, you guys will hear some thoughts from me for sure. Got some cool light going on back here. Some bleed through here and there from these holes. Ooh, did not mean to scale that. Push it back just a bit. I think this will give a cool claustrophobic feel to the back of our tugboat here. I'm just going to leave that clipping. They can mount that sheet metal over top of those spindles without too much trouble. Yeah, that light beam is pretty cool right there. So these will be some of the living quarters here. And then that'll require a turning of snapping off. Put a wall piece down like this, and then a few facades. Snapping turned on, like that. I'll double that one up. So that's pretty secure. I wonder if I could just lower a lot of these floors like that. Is that too low? Yeah, that's going to block the head. <laughs> Just have a slightly uneven platform here. That's okay. I like that one where it is, though. We'll tilt it a tiny bit, make it look a bit rougher. I might come back with some of those rusty rooftops and roughen that up some. That's a base for the bottom floor. Let's go ahead and quick save just in case. As I'm working on the superstructure for the living quarters here on the back of the tugboat, I'm going to skip ahead in time just a bit because I'm just putting basic walls into place and it took a while to get the overall superstructure shape that I wanted. So let's go ahead and just jump forward a bit. And that is going to be... This is a huge space. What is this going to be? Could it be a marketplace or just living quarters? I think it's a little too hard to get to 
to be a marketplace. You'd have to let people into this secured area on the back of the ship, so... Um, the market might be out here at the uh, water tanks. This might be living quarters only. This upper section right here, which would have been, I believe, the command deck of the tugboat, the bridge, it's going to be the uh, mayor of the settlement's personal quarters. If perhaps mayor is the right term, whoever is in charge of this local branch of the Minutemen and this location, that'll be their quarters up there. Before we dive into the upper quarters, though, I want to go back to, let's say, Homemaker. Because on this bottom deck, I want to put in what every single one of my Minutemen settlements has to have, an armory. At this point, the Minutemen have to be running low on looted security fencing <laughs> from the various police stations and military facilities. I do want to make sure that's not going to clip completely through the ceiling. Oh no, we're good. Awesome. I'm going to bring it up to right past the window for maximum space. Then I'll put a uh, pillar on each side, a metal pillar to seal in those side gaps. The light coming through the windows is just cool. Now I saw, what was it, structures and metal prefabs, no, wood walls. We had some cool scrappy walls in here. I wonder if perhaps one of those would be a good addition to these metal walls to just help break up the repetition. Well, not one of those because it's just a giant gap in it. And those are just multi-story. <laughs> Shack bridge. Could be useful for connecting sections. Uh, maybe I've gone too far and we should not have taken that wall out. <laughs> well, I'll put it back later. Besides the armory that I've laid out down here, we're going to make this entire center space the galley. So we're going to look at furniture and then it might actually be tables. Looking for those metal vault style tables. So that picnic table is huge. Yeah, these are a bit smaller. So we'll have the eating area crammed right there. And then our preparation area along this wall. I think under actually homemaker again and then uh, furniture yeah it has a fixtures category which is quite helpful got some sinks as well as some stoves here I could see them possibly rigging up a uh, broken, half broken 
electric stove there. But I also want to look at counters and cabinets. See what we can jury rig in here. Some overhead cabinets. Oh, that's clipping right through. It's okay if it blocks one of the windows partially. I'll have them hang it from the ceiling there. Although I'm now questioning the wisdom of having the armory next to the food prep area. Sounds like rusted guns to me. Then again, with all the salt water out here and the uh, the salty air, odds are you've got to keep those things oiled up anyway, so it probably isn't a huge deal. Uh, this countertop right here, it's going to make things annoying to place on it, but I'm going to tilt it just a tad. And this is going to go on this side because... Oop, don't want to scale it, just want to tilt it. Because on this side of the stove, I want to put your classic uh, wood-burning stove. From... Resources... No. Uh, crafting. There we go. Oh yeah, there's some stoves here too. We'll do this cooking stove though. I've got a mod that lets me add some of that additional wood stove piping. And so I'll have it going out the window just a tad. For now, I'll just get it lined up. Oh yeah, we don't really have a power source on this boat yet, do we? Oh, here we go. This could be our reactor room. Kind of protected in the core. Let me seal that wall back up before I forget. Structures, structures. You can tell I've been building for a while because my icons are starting to not want to load. So I've been toggling through so much. I think, though, uh, for the generators, it might just be this compact backup that actually fits in there. Uh, yeah, the fusion's going to be a real tight fit. How big is this super reactor? Jeez. Vault tech reactor. Also massive. Oh man, if there was just a way we could get this to fit. I'll go ahead and build one because I'll probably use one here uh, whether I leave it in there or not. It's just not a great fit. Let me look over here. Oh, I stuck on. There we go. Well, maybe not. Here we go. I can also clip it a little bit, possibly over here if I have to. Scrap that wooden frame and... Oh yeah, it's a tight fit, but... I can make that work. I'm going to scrap that rug too if I'm going to have the reactor halfway on top. So yeah, that still has access to the buttons if we move it just a little bit like that. If I 
can just rotate it on the correct axis, we'll be all set. There we go. And of course, the power line is over there. All we have to do now is get a inter-settlement power system going, starting by bringing it out the door. That actually worked pretty well. So I will use place everywhere, connect this extra conduit, and clip it right through the wall. Should come out right there. This will be a relatively clean way of doing things. Then I can have our power lines here. Uh, let's have a switch, maybe? Now, we probably shouldn't have any switches that are ground level because if this isn't going to be walled in, you don't want to have the ability to just turn off all of the power to our tugboat without warning. Come on, telephone pole. A little bit closer. Psh. Use that same trick. Connect it first, then move it with the power of place everywhere. See if this one will go. Look at that. I'm going to give this one a slight tilt. We'll have it near the shore right there. And we'll do a strong wireless pylon for now. Not sure why all of my Brahmin and settlers are gathering here at the ramp. Very odd. For now, I'm just going to put this pylon up here so that we have a connection because I wanted to get a light going for the galley. That's the whole point of all that. And yeah, we can use a lot of these ship lights probably. Like that one. Do one on that side too. orange lights for the armory. That looks pretty cool. Lots of industrial lights and they're even barely floating. It's always up to Bethesda's collision models, which are not 100% accurate, which is okay. That's how they're supposed to work because your collision models are invisible and are less complex by design. Makes things easy on the collision engine, but it does give you the occasional floating object. Now, before I forget, let's put those end pillars in for the armory. Let's see, what was that one vertical I beam? Yeah. Why is it so short? It's a very awkward height. Because that beam right there is two stories tall. We have like a two thirds stories tall. Hmm. I think this post right here is our best option. We'll just clip it into the ground. And that'll be our way of sealing up the edges here. Just gonna shift our cabinet over now. Okay. And now we've got the start to our eating area. And that's actually a good sized prep area. I'm gonna 
put a couple of rugs down. Uh, that one. Mod angle X5. That actually worked. I can't grab it unless I use actually even in place everywhere I can't see it so I had to rotate that with the console commands <laughs> the uh, picnic style cloth right there it's pretty good where did I just use that recently oh at the cooking area for the prison I think pretty sure We'll just get this going over here. I'm not going to do a bunch of floor stuff in here because the tugboat is going to be a, a difficult angle to get things right with. And actually, I'm going to disable that rug. I liked how it looked, but just getting this one floor uh, mat aligned is beginning to be a bit of a nightmare. I fell right through. <laughs> okay, that's getting close. The floor is just at this really awkward angle. That's pretty good. Uh, let's just move it one unit with the console. Mod position X, no, mod angle. X1, nope, it was definitely negative. Uh, yeah, one corner or the other is going to have to be a little bit clipped, like you can see possibly right there. Just because that's the wonky angles we're dealing with. So, this inner room right here, you guys tell me what this should be. Seeing it does not have to house our reactor. Got a pretty good foundation going for our tugboat here. It's taken longer than I expected to get the framework together here. I almost wish this thing could sail, but it reminds me of, uh, what is it, Libertaria? The floating... A raider complex. I don't like where it's going. I'm wondering if there's going to be lodging out here on the walkway or just lodging upstairs. It might make more sense to have all of the sleeping quarters up here on the second deck and have living spaces, your scrappy living rooms down here. So let's go with that for now, and you guys come up with some ideas for this back room here. I'm gonna save. I think we're gonna finish off most of the dining area. What would that be on a ship? Uh, the galley, there we go. But I wanna bounce back to this living space just for a change of pace and I am going to place one of these rugs back here just to be difficult. I want to work on this for a few minutes. Again, just a change of pace. Rotate that by 0.5 every time and we'll get it to that close enough point. I want to try and get a flag hanging here. Might just be a Minutemen flag. No. We'll make it a General Day flag because I love the light shafts here. And that's got a cool uh, hole in the flag. General Dave fighting for a better future. Casting some of that light down on the ground. And we're going to build a little bit of a living quarters here. So for our furniture. Let's start with a good sized couch. Grab one of these modern ratty ones here.
And I think we're going to put a nice big lounge chair in the corner. Do we pass all those already? Oh, yeah. Like that. Then a additional chair like this. And... Got to keep this walkway clear, but I think we're going to have a radio or something uh, on a table that's over here. Where's a good small end table? Do this heavy duty metal one like this. We'll drop a few more end tables in here that are fit for the tugboat life. Yeah, a real narrow one for this side. Ooh, actually, uh, let's go over to furniture and do it your shelf. This do-it-yourself wet bar is what I had in mind. No, it's just too tall. Just too tall. Do we have just a very small, nice-looking shelf we can use? This one's pretty good sized, but it's not as tall. So we have our tables and chairs there. You know, guys, this could be a bathroom. I know I asked you guys for ideas, but that way, if there's an attack, you have or I guess like a siege, you have a restroom facility nearby. Let's go over to the clutter here. Uh, decoration. Got your boating decorations. And some light reading. There's our radio, complete with some hollow tapes. And some games for the kids. Got some Minutemen loot there. I think I'll just add some books to this bottom shelf. It's not wanting to snap. There we go. And we're going to want a light. And I think I'm going to put a lamp in. So let's move those decorations down. Find ourselves a decent lamp. It's a very clean one. Well, our wireless power is definitely working. Could have one fancy light bulb stuck onto the wall. Give it a nice angle, like it's hanging off there. Just stuck on the wall. And... You know, we've got to have a couple of decorative pieces here. Uh, I know we had some flags, but <laughs> the general day of painting. We've got to have at least one lighthouse painting in here. Memories of the open sea before the war. I'm thinking we'll have occasional sandbags along this wall. I'm going to go ahead and place a couple while I'm thinking about it so I don't forget. 
yeah, and actually a uh, raised guard post like this would be kind of cool. We'll have a crow's nest up top along with some turrets, but this will just give them a defensive platform down here on the lower section as well. Do we have just the sandbags? Ah, uh, we've got these. That'll do. We're not going to have, like, barbed wire across the whole ship because the idea is that we'll close up those outer doors. But just so you've got a few hiding places along the ship if you need them. And, of course, our artillery piece up here. Again, while I'm thinking about it, let's put some doors on. Oh, hey, it's the boat door. It even snaps. Would you look at that? That definitely comes in handy. How's my steel? Oh, 1200. Okay. I've got to go for a supply run after I record this episode. Otherwise, I'm going to forget again. So for the boat doors, we're going to want to go pretty heavy duty, I think. Yeah. Steel doors, bunker style. Do blue for the outer doors and... The white, rusty steel for those inside doors. This is pretty cozy. Well, time to go around and uh, close up, or open up all the doors now and see how they open. Uh, so we're going to want to reverse basically all of those. <laughs> uh, mod angle Z... 180. Well, that'll do. And the same for you. And that one's going to be dicey. We'll come back to that one. Of course. Uh, that one's mostly okay. do mod angle 5 there. Yeah, that works. Uh, this one, though. Start by flipping it. That works. Uh, this one right here, though. It's going to clip one side or the other. Hmm. I might put a metal pole because the hinges are floating, but this should prevent it from clipping now. It's just that, it, yeah, it's, it needs one more extra support pole right there to fit into the space where we have it. And we'll just pretend like it's not clipping on the other side right there. This has a lot more space than our boats did at the Kingsport Lighthouse build because we had one crowded, almost airliner style transport boat. And then uh, we had our battleship, essentially, which was also packed pretty tight. But this is very roomy. We've got some serious room to work with here. Let's add a few more decorations, and we'll call the galley mostly complete as well. <laughs> I gotta stop grabbing the entire tugboat. It would not be a Minutemen galley without 
a Minuteman banner inside. Let's go for the medium sized ones. Uh, where are we? The general is restoring hope. We'll go with that one. You're in a pretty secure galley here. Now, of course, you do have to walk on the outside to get to and from the galley. Uh, so, I guess the armory being over here is... Well, you better hope that you're close enough to grab the extra weapons if the attack is bad. Here, I'll hang the light up high and then the banner a bit lower. That looks pretty good. No paintings here in the galley. We'll just stick to flags and banners, depending on what we have. Oh, that's cool. You can actually see the bunting from the outside. That'll also cover up the windows so you don't get shot as you're eating. Now, the cooks have a good bit of cover as is. They'll be okay. Of course, this side is looking towards the inside of the settlement. Not as big of an issue. Not sure if a feral ghoul is a uh, good appetizing decoration for the wall. Yeah, we're going to pass on those decorations for our eating area. Got this nice metal chalkboard here. It says metal frame. Looks like a chalkboard. Useful though for announcements. That would be a great place for announcements. Oh, this is cool. We've got some animated curtains. Scrappy ones. These would be a good way of covering up those windows. Although they don't appear to be animated at all. Once you place them. It may be one of those objects where if I uh, reload the game, they'll be animated properly. So, we'll see. Nuka clock. The hanging buoy just feels like it belongs. Just to add some visual interest, that's clipping right through. I bet this would look really good putting a strand of these back here. Because, yeah, it'll stretch across a good chunk of the space here. Tilted a bit. So, what else is our galley lacking? Oh, what did I grab? Tugboat again. <laughs> I'm going to forget what I'm doing and release that tugboat and move the whole thing and have to load a save game. For now, I'll just put a couple of weapon racks like this built into the wall. We'll come back and do some more with these later on. I think I have some more advanced versions of these now that I can also use from a mod that you guys suggested. I think I used for my Nuka Ranger mod, uh, the Ranger Camp. We'll have one heavy weapon storage container. I think I'm no longer carrying enough weapons to actually stock the, uh, the armory for now though because I placed so many out at Nuka World that I had to carry out there. So guys, I think for today 
Let's just drop by Creative Clutter. And someone's been baking. That's cool. Don't think I've used these props before. We'll keep the decorations light in here. For the walls, at least. Ah, food storage. That's something I... Well, hadn't really considered. We'll partially cover up our announcement board for now. That's a really cool chair. Let's see if I can get it to be not highlighted so you guys can see it. Here. Nifty. Fits the 50s, 60s theme quite well. Cry later drinks, that's pretty great. I like this idea right here. All of your silverware at the table. We'll just have one use set of plates and dishes where someone's had their meal. That's cozy, guys. That is cozy and it fits the theme quite well. The very last thing I want to do is we're going to drop over to decorations and miscellaneous, my massive category here. I'm going to grab those smokestack pieces. Take these right here. We'll direct this out the window. I might lower that stove a bit, make this work a bit better. I think it's still gonna kind of clip into the window. We'll see. Is that centered? Actually, that's not bad. Make sure snapping is turned on. Yeah, we'll have to rotate that quite a bit to make it look good. That's far from perfect, but that's pretty convincing. As long as you don't look too close as I rotate the stove out of the way. There we go. That's just an awkward height to try and get that stove pipe out the window. Very cool though. Okay guys, well that is the first part of creating the beached tugboat lifestyle. This needs a stairway right here. Again, let me know what you guys think should go in this inner room right here. And if you remember those settlements that I listed at the beginning, uh, let me know what your ideas are as I look at the final creations of General Dave's Minutemen Empire. And I'll list those in the description just so you guys can see them visually as well because, uh, to be honest, <laughs> I've already forgotten which ones I mentioned that I had no ideas for just yet. For now, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.